Do you love your kitchen? No, that's okay. But we can still be grateful for our kitchens, no matter how crummy. Let me tell you my process for turning ingratitude into gratitude, even in a less than ideal kitchen. Hi, I'm Misty Winkler, homemaker, homeschool mom, and author of the book, Simplified Organization, Learn to Love What Must Be Done. Ready or not, you've landed right in the middle of Organize October, our challenge to work through our house, taking the most concentrated action steps that will build traction, momentum in our homes and also in our hearts. This is our final day about the kitchen. So grab a basket of laundry to fold, or maybe a sink full of dishes to wash, and let's dig in. So when we're working in the kitchen, we don't wanna get so lost in our tracks that we forget the point of it all and the fact that we are working in service of others. It's easy to feel like the work is meaningless and mundane and to start griping, even just in our hearts, about the fact that we have to do the work over again. So we're going to take three steps today to make over our attitude, to repent, rejoice, repeat in our kitchen. Start by identifying a common complaint that you have about your kitchen. You probably don't have to think too long and hard about this one. It can be something about the space itself, like the sink or the layout, or it could be something particular about the work that you have to do, like the common thought that I hate doing the dishes, or my fridge is always showing fingerprints and I hate that, or my fridge isn't big enough, or whatever thing work or space that causes you to break out into complaining mode. Identify one common complaint and then think about something that you are grateful for in that thing in particular. So if your common complaint is that you hate doing dishes, find something that you can actually be grateful for in that. So maybe it's the fact that you have people who actually eat food and therefore make the dishes dirty. And you're actually grateful for the people. Even if right now, perhaps you don't like doing the dishes, you do like having people in your home who eat. Or if your common complaint is something about your refrigerator or your oven, think about the benefit that that appliance gives you, even if it's not ideal. And then don't just replace your complaint with gratitude in your head only, but actually write a statement of gratitude about that thing that you usually complain about. Write it out on an index card in words in a complete sentence. So here's my example. My kitchen sink is obnoxiously small and shallow. Now, the observation that my sink is small and shallow, especially compared to the sink that I had before, is simply a fact. What makes it a complaint is when I make this observation out of irritation, as if I deserve better, or I can't work under such oppressive circumstances. I add the drama. I am the one provoked by the fact of the circumstance. Now, when I start identifying this reality, it reminds me about what I say and do when one sibling complains about another sibling being annoying, right? The sink is annoying to me. And my answer to my kids is that the complainer is the one who can stop being annoyed. 
our responses are within our control. We don't have to control other people or the circumstances in order to not be annoyed or irritated or frustrated. We can change that reaction within our own selves. The right thing is to respond with love and gratitude. There is always a way forward in faithfulness. Complaining, sinning is never necessary. If my kitchen sink annoys me, I cannot be annoyed. I can choose to be grateful instead. The problem is me and not the sink. Now, if we owned this house, we would change the fact, the reality of the sink and replace it with a better one. But we're renting in the house we're building and we'll move into in who knows how many years, I will have a large single basin, apron front, perfect form of a kitchen sink. That day is not this day. This day, I am called to work cheerfully where I am. This I can do, God helping me. So here is my written gratitude statement. The kitchen sink might be inconvenient, but I am so glad that there's a utility sink just a few feet away in the laundry room where I can wash and soak large pots and pans. What a blessing. The funny thing about this reality that I am grateful for, the utility sink, is that we lived in this house a full year before I realized that there actually was a deep sink available to me. (laughs) It just wasn't in the kitchen. (laughs) You can think out of the box, and sometimes it takes looking at your space with gratitude before the unconventional option becomes obvious. Next in our steps, we have a real powerhouse move. Spend one full minute, use a timer, thanking God for the things that you love about your kitchen. It can be the space, it can be the work, whatever prompts you to gratitude as you look around your kitchen, pray with your eyes open, slowly scanning your kitchen and offering God thanks and praise for all the benefits he has poured out on you. Gratitude is personal. It's not a mere list of things you like. We are grateful to God for his work and his provision for us. When we take the time to tell him thank you, our hearts are radically reorganized. Now, we're working through repent, rejoice, repeat together. And now we come to the repeat part of the process. Set a 10-minute morning or evening kitchen routine with the work that you have to repeat most regularly. So look through the work that you have to do in the kitchen daily. Reduce it to the essential 10 minutes. And then write that out and post it visibly working through it every morning or evening until it becomes normal. Now, 10 minutes is not enough to get ahead or catch up, but it is enough to stay on top of daily messes. And we can start with maintenance and we can slowly build out from there. The main thing that this helps us do is recognize that the repetitive nature, the daily nature of the work is a perk and not a hardship. Now, I have many other posts all about 10-minute morning and evening routines that you can find linked in the description or on my blog. The daily bookend routines are the key to keeping up with kitchen chores. With these three steps, we can repent, rejoice, repeat in our kitchen. 
It's not too late to start the Organize October challenge. Just go to simplyconvivial.com slash October to get the checklists, prize opportunities, and so much more waiting for you there. That's simplyconvivial.com slash October. Next step is going to be tackling the living room and entryway, and we will get to the point of repenting, rejoicing, and repeating even there. So stay tuned.